In this online lecture, I'm going to show you how to interpret formal charges when it comes to bond line formulas. So for instance, let's say we have this molecule right here and we want to get a better idea of this carbon right here. Like for instance, how many hydrogens are connected to him? Well, we'd have to think about the formal charge first. And remember, we learned in a previous online lecture of formal charges is that whenever carbon has a positive formal charge, it always has three bonds total. And while we're looking at this, let's remind ourselves, remember when carbon has a negative charge, it means it also has three bonds, but it has a lone pair of electrons as well. So if we know this is true about these carbons, let's go back to our structure here. If it's true that this carbon has a positive formal charge, then again he must have three bonds, let's say one here, one here, which means he must have one more bond and that bond must be to a hydrogen right here. So that means this carbon actually only has one hydrogen connected to him. And we determine that again by thinking about his formal charge. So for instance, let's look at this carbon right here. How many hydrogens are connected to him? Well again, because he has a formal charge, we know all carbons with a formal charge have one, two, three bonds like this, which means all of his bonds are taken up to other carbons. Therefore, he would have no hydrogens directly connected to him. Now let's do our same analysis to this carbon right here. How many hydrogens? Well again, he has a positive formal charge, so we can count the bonds. He would have this one bond right here to the carbon below, which means he must therefore have two hydrogens directly connected to him to make the total of three bonds. And lastly, let's analyze this carbon right here. He has the negative formal charge. And remember, we know what that means. It means first he has a lone pair of electrons, so let's list that. And we also know he has a total of three bonds. So let's see, one bond here, one bond here, which means this carbon must have one hydrogen to complete his three bonds. Just like all the other skills in organic chemistry, pretty soon what we're doing here is going to become very intuitive and it needs to become very intuitive. Now let's look at another example to make sure you got this. Let's say we need more information about this particular molecule here and let's use formal charges to fill in this information. First of all, notice this oxygen right here has no formal charge indicated. What does that mean to us? Well remember, let's go back. We learned in the previous online lecture that if oxygen has no formal charge, then typically he exists like this. He has a total of two bonds and two lone pairs. So going back to our molecule here, because he has no formal charge, notice he does have his two bonds, one to the left, one to the right. Therefore, he must have two lone pairs like this. So here's a case of formal charges telling us how many lone pair electrons an atom might have. Let's do the same analysis with this oxygen right here. Notice he doesn't have a formal charge listed. So again, we assume that he has two bonds and therefore two lone pairs. So going back to him here, he has two bonds, but those two bonds are together in one double bond. But that's okay, we count that as two bonds, which means he would have also two lone pairs like the other oxygen. So that takes care of him. Now let's look at this oxygen right here. We notice that he has a positive formal charge. So again, going back to what we know here, whenever oxygen has a positive formal charge, we have to know that he has a total of three bonds and one lone pair of electrons. So let's go back here. Notice the oxygen has two bonds below to the carbon and one bond to the upper hydrogen there. That's a total of three bonds, so that's his three bonds and therefore he must have a lone pair of electrons here. So again, formal charge is telling us that that oxygen only has one lone pair of electrons. Let's do the same analysis to this oxygen right here. Again, he has a positive formal charge, so we know he makes a total of three bonds, which notice he is making here. That means he must also have his one lone pair of electrons right here. And lastly, this oxygen right here, he has a negative formal charge. Well remember, we saw before that if oxygen has a negative formal charge, 
it means he makes one bond and has three lone pairs. So going back to our molecule here, he definitely has one bond below to the carbon, therefore he must have three lone pairs of electrons to complete him. Let's look at another example here, but let's use nitrogen as the example now. And let's start right here with this nitrogen. Notice he has a negative formal charge. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back. Remember, when nitrogen has a negative formal charge, that means he has two bonds and two lone pairs of electrons. So going back here, we see that he already has his two bonds here, so all we need to add are the two lone pairs of electrons to complete him. Now let's look at this nitrogen right here. Notice he has no formal charge. Well, what does it take for nitrogen not to have a formal charge? Well, remember, that means he's going to have a total of three bonds and one lone pair. So going back here, we would know that we see here the three bonds that he has. Therefore, the only thing this structure is missing is his lone pair. Now, look at this nitrogen over here. It has a positive formal charge. Let's see what the case is for that right here. Four total bonds for nitrogen to have a plus formal charge. So going back here, remember we're counting the triple bond on the right of him as one, two, three bonds, and the single bond to the left of him as the fourth bond. So those four bonds give him his plus formal charge, and he has no lone pairs of electrons, so he's actually complete as is right here. So let's look at this nitrogen right here. Notice we would count the triple bond individually as three bonds. He has no formal charge. So we're looking at this case here on the left, three bonds and one lone pair. So going back, this nitrogen should have a lone pair of electrons right here. Now let's look at this nitrogen right here. Notice he has a negative formal charge. And remember, we know negative means two bonds, two lone pairs. So careful, remember, we're counting the double bond as the two bonds. So all we need to add here is just two lone pairs of electrons. And lastly, this nitrogen right here, think about this. We would consider this as a double bond going down. That's two. One bond to the hydrogen in the upper right. That's three. And remember, no formal charge with three bonds. Remember, means that that nitrogen needs one lone pair of electrons. So that completes him right here. Now, careful here. We're not saying that every time you see a bond-lined formula to fill in the lone pairs, remember, this skill is only necessary if we need to know those particular details. And as you can see, filling them in is very easy as long as you remember what's true about nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon and their formal charges.